let's just listen to it doesn't really matter but since it's a song or a sketch i wrote like last week we were here on stream we're gonna listen to it just because so what i'm gonna do is take the stream put it up make sure that you are listening to it and we have two plugins that are gonna be our instruments to visualize what things are sounding like so this is the sketch and it's just eight bars and look at what the span and multi-core do. Right off. So we have a spectrum analyzer that goes from plus 20, which I'm going to change, we're going to go from 0 dB FS to 180 down minus. So 180 is a little bit too much, although that would be a 32 bit floating point thing. I'm going to go close to the 144, which is 24 bits. So we can clearly see that when we are nulling something against each other, and it really nulls down to oblivion, span should not show us anything maybe down to 120 124 96 but the other instrument that i wanted to set up is the 2bc multi-core by matt this is invaluable this is another tool while span is free multi-core isn't <laughs> but you have phase relationships for different bands so it splits your signal in different areas and those tiny lines tell you which kind of phase relationship you have, the correlation, not the global one, which you have on top, not the balance, which you have at the bottom, but the middle part is what is the 62 Hertz doing? Is it mono? Is it stereo? Is it canceling itself? So our purpose is gonna be this. If we have two EQs and I'm gonna go, for example, the MDW versus the Fab filter, and I'm gonna turn on the MSCD. You see how all of the plugins, the gray ones, have MSCD? MSCD is a simple plugin that does utility mid, side, and what is this, ED? I don't even remember. <laughs> it's an acronym for something. But all of these MSCD are flipping phase. Simple as that. So they're all bypassed, but when they turn blue, they're not affecting the sound, they're just flipping phase. So if I listen to the MDW and the Fab filter in flip phase, and this plugin is all off, and it's got zero gain, and it's doing nothing, and the Fab filter is here, fully flat, doing nothing, and I press play now, we should hear full silence. Let me just maybe resize this thing a little bit. Can I? No? Yes? Maybe? No? Okay, well, let's keep it here. <laughs> My ignorance is superior to the UEX design. So what happens when two EQs are exactly identical? Hmm, okay. Well, I see something that shouldn't be happening, right? So maybe it's because I mess these things up so much while talking and doing that I'm changing things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass both the MDWEQ and the Fab filter, and we're gonna look at just the flip phase. Okay, now you see that this is going, we should probably could even have a sort of a bigger control something, but I don't know how to do it, so we're not gonna do it. The playhead is going and we don't see anything, like, like span is completely pitch black. So if this is happening, it means that we are canceling each and every bit that we're sending from one EQ to the other. But in this specific instance, the Fab filter and the MDW are bypassed. So what happens if I go the original clean track versus the MDW and I try and null everything? So I do have some signal there, 
Why is there some signal? Well, it could be the oversampling rounding up, it could be dithering, it could be any, any sort of processing or whatever. So usually what happens here? Do we call it different? Well, no, we call it the same pretty much. We call it as transparent as it could be. Although we don't have 24 bits transparency, if we wanted to, we would go full bypass. At that point, we would see nothing. So let's try this. Full bypass versus just the EQ engaged. This is full bypass. And this is engaged. And as you can see, the two bus multi-core is showing me full plus one with almost 108 down in uh, cancellation. So I would call this pretty, pretty far out. It's like, it's nulling itself. But you see what I did, right? I have two instruments. The two bus multi-core is a little bit more coarse, but it will tell me if is things are really matching in phase or not from low to high, while span goes so much down that we catch each and every dithering detail. If I were to move the bottom up and we would not see past 96 B, uh, dBs down FS, we'll probably see it empty, right? But I think we should stay down to 24 bits, just so we're clear. So this has kind of a dithering thing. How about the fab filter? So now this one, the original versus the fab filter, without obviously the MDW, sounds like this. Okay, so this guy doesn't have anything. MDW has some kind of processing behind it. What does it do? We don't know, but it does. Is it like FIDEF? We don't know. It could be. We don't know. It's <laughs> I, I'm probably going to try and ask, but we don't know. But the fab filter is completely clean not matter how active that is, because we're at one, you know, there's bands, but they're in bypass, all this sort of stuff. Let's keep going. How about the matte, the EQ blue? Everything is off. I'm going to keep oversampling on. There's no feed F. What does it sound against the clean? Similar, right? Looks like Poar dithering or something, it's very high shaped towards Nyquist. So this has to be something that helps the EQ manipulate data for sure, or just output better math. And it's kind of similar to what the to what the MDW was doing. Let's keep going. E pure. I just have to make sure that they are all reset, which is kind of nice because it's just gonna say zero, 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 everything. Perfect. Let me null it up. This should be zero. Everything is set up. We haven't done any specific changes. Again, e pure versus clean. Nothing. Whether this is bypass or not, no calculations. There's nothing going on. Okay, that's their own take. Now we go filter back. Make sure, obviously, this is going to go nicely also for resetting stuff, because I never know, you know, I've touched these while talking about them so much. So how about filter bank versus clean? Nothing that we could see up until 24 bits, right? Okay. How about master queue? Let's turn these off, put master queue here, Keep all of its bands down. Zero C, fat, okay. Everything should be flat, split. Nothing here as well. No limiting, no color, nothing. Perfect, okay. So cleaner than the clean ones. How about Studio EQ? Let's turn this band off. Everything should be here. Flip phase. Nothing to report, super clean. How about Kirchhoff EQ? So this guy, I'll make a little bit smaller. I want to take the frequencies things down. We obviously have to just erase this. So I'm going to go remove. This thing says a little bit of an interface jittery thing. 
go remove. It just goes away for no reason. So that's to note. Maybe in the current Nuendo's version, that's just what's happening. Minimum phase, all this stuff. How about we flip phase and listen? Okay. Or well here, I had minus 0 0.41. You see how our test completely eludes any you know, random act of mistaking things. Now, here, clean, right? We don't see anything coming up. Awesome. How about the Oxford EQ? We flip phase, we make sure that all of the bands are down, trims at zero, we press play, see nothing. So here we've got some plugins that have kind of a busier noise floor and others that are completely cleaned down to 24 bits. Are they cleaned down to 32 bits? I don't care. <laughs> this is a 32 bit floating point session. Trust me, it's okay. We're not into that, but you know, it could be dithering, could be anything else. So Eric says, is the MAT multi-core comparable to parts of Equivocate? Um, I don't know, because Equivocate, I have, I know the plugin, but I haven't used that much. So I've seen in use, but that's another plugin that I don't quite have here under the hood. So probably, ah, you know, I don't know. This is, this is a good question. So this should be investigated. Unfortunately, I don't know Equivocate that well for the multi-core behaviors, unless you mean the the way the, the color, the, the way the bands are done, because Equivocate has a completely different behavior. That's why I didn't pick it. Uh, I didn't pick it because it's not, it's splitting the frequency spectrum in auditive oral areas that science has understood human beings tend to divide their hearable spectrum into. Does it make any sense? Because it was a long sentence. So equivocate is not here. I don't have it here because it doesn't quite follow the stereotypical EQ behavior. So Matt, the EQ blue is just what you see here is just bands on par with any other EQ. Now we don't know whether they're parallel, serial, but the way equivocate does it is all newfangled audio does is it just gives you that frequency spectrum split into a scheme, into a sort of like a, a model, a model, not a scheme, a model through which you could say human beings tend to listen to. And that really conjures everything that Newfangled Audio has done, which is amazing, but it's very particular. While Blue and others just, you know, I would say simple EQs, it's not true, but what Equivocate does is very sort of like takes its own direction into things, yeah. So uh, it has to do with psychoacoustics, yes, for sure, because that's how they found out human beings could be thought to split their audible frequency spectrum. And from there, things get split and reassigned and reworked. That's why I don't have it here. I thought about it, then I said, no, it doesn't make sense. Also, truth be told, Equivocate, I haven't used that much. It's also newer, but you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a different EQ and I would use it probably... Um, I don't know. I just haven't used it that much, probably. Elevate and saturate, generate everywhere. <laughs> I mean, use them so much. So, good question, though, because equivocate was something that I thought about putting, and, you know, see, you had the same idea. But no, it's different, so we're not going to do it. Now, the comparison. So, MDW and Fab Filter. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do MDW and Sonox. One thing that I remember, George Massenburg in person, as I was there, hating about the Oxford EQ was the fact that the bands could not travel full overlap. And bless him because he's such, you know, old genius minds, I think I like, <laughs> like they, I'm not them. But I remember feeling the value of what he had said like six months, one year after. It's so true that when you're working on something and you get close to the edge of the limit of a band and you can't go that much further, 
And these means you have to reallocate the colors and the bands used, your critical listening and maneuvering under pressure of the sound is completely put to mass destruction. You're, you're completely collapsing because all of a sudden you're waking up and say like, oh, the blue band doesn't go there. Okay. Well, I haven't used the yellow one, but it will not be able to get close to the green. I just need blue and green to be that close. And the units that Massenburg has designed have massive overlaps. And so he's always been an advocate of, I remember the two things he said was like, handles are dangerous, shouldn't use them, which I'm not in favor of. I actually like to use handles. But the overlaps should be infinite especially because it's a clean EQ and it's digital code, why not? So first things first, you know, we can go pretty much where we want in MDW. And yes, it's true, it's something I didn't say, but I'm saying it now. So MDW has complete freedom. The Massenburg, the Oxford, the Sonox, no. So now here's what we're gonna do. If you lived and survived up until here, you're awesome. You're like, you, you, you want to be serious about this, all right? Oh, you just woke up because I shot. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. I don't care how much you hate this as your instructor. This is uh, somebody who's being chosen by you to improve. I feel the responsibility of saying this is very important, not just about money. It's digital cues. It's, well, you know, it's what, 50% of what we do? So we're gonna do this. We're gonna call a bell that is always six dBs. Let me just in completely reset this so we don't have things in the middle. It's gonna be plus six at 200 Hertz for starters. And we're gonna call 1.0 of Q in the Sonox. And we're gonna keep it at type one because it's minimal gain, Q dependencies, molar amounts of booster cuts will have relatively high Q, precise and well-defined. Let's try this, the type one. We're gonna do the same thing here, use band two, we're gonna call it a 200 plus six Q of one. The numbers are the same, the gain trimming are the same. If I go flip the phase on the Oxford and press play, I should hear I don't know what I'm gonna hear. Let's try it out. Also, what I wanna do here is the scale. I wanna have the scale here in, oh, I can't have it. I'm gonna have it in, in 20, but it would be awesome to have 12 because this scale of the MDW, the vertical scale, just consider, and the horizontal scale, they're different. So don't, don't go like, oh, that's taller than the other one. No, 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 200 Hertz plus six. Now the question is, can the Q be adjusted to become the closest we can? So I'm gonna press play and we're finally gonna to listen to that. Okay, so if we're staying here and I'm telling you we should probably, I mean, I'm gonna keep the volume on because if you, if you can't hear it, we're nulling down at an impressive 108 down. This is a lot. The M2, the multi-core tells me plus one all along. So that's to me, the second, the more psychoacoustic reference tells me these things are identical. But what if I go 0 0.9, for example, on the Oxford or, or 1.03? You see, I'm proving this point to you. We can't hear it, but the multi-core says that there's something about 200, right? A little bit lower. And the nulling of our span says that we are actually now at minus 60 dB. So nulling at that level is still showing up on two bus multicores. This to me would be different. While this would be not identical because they would need to see nothing on span, but still pretty close. So because this fast is now bothering me, I'm gonna go medium, <laughs> like it better, or slow. Sometimes I'm kind of a slow type. Slow is kind of nice. So this is what's going on. Now we could try and say, okay, well, how low can I go on the Oxford? 
the Oxford, I can go 0 0.5. And this is, do not underestimate that this is such an important point. Now you, you could hear it, right? I could from here. And I'm not even at loud volume. So that's by far not a null, for sure. It's not nulling. Now, where can we go here? Well, we can go 0.5, for sure. So I'm going to dial it. And then I'm going to press play again. We're still nulling pretty much at the same level. So here, we're good to go. Problem being, we can go farther on the MDW. We can go 0.1. And that's the Massenburg moment. This thing. Designing these things on EQs, especially back then, such a wide queue, and retaining things that do not explode, I guarantee you, it's not easy. I wouldn't know it in a half of these, but I know people told me like this isn't easy at all, right? And the then there's the communication between the bands. It's a different story, but this is point one. This thing can't do point one. Can type three do point one? It feels definitely closer. So let's try and do this. Maybe type four is even wider. Okay, so can point five of type four be equal to this? Let's try that. Okay, so type 4 for these bells can go this far. It's the type 1.12 actually becomes 0 0.1. Now, I hate that the Q factor doesn't change, but we could call it that you can actually have Massenburg-like shapes on both bells. The Oxford and the Massenburg design works the Q6. I, I, I wanted to say that the same man the genius is behind both things. So, you know, it's a Sony console that he worked on and there's a lot of Massenburg stuff behind. So it makes kind of sense. So you don't have GML curves, they say, because it's only Pro Tools AAX, but honestly, Type 4 gets you there and can go even wider. So, you know, I don't know if you want that, but the Oxford can go wider than the Massenburg design works. How about the tiniest you can go with Type 1? So 16. 16, this goes to 25. So let's try and dial in 16. According to our calculations, this should be the same, right? And we're there. So that's still at around minus 96. And multi-core says we're good. Let me try and dial in a narrower Q on the MDW. Okay. So this thing, the type 2 or 1, we can't go past 60, while this goes to 25.6. So the Massenburg Design Works has tinier needle-like uh, bells, right? But in terms of, of peaks, which is what I'm going to do now, they're all there. Uh, the Oxford can go wider. The Massenburg Design Works, the Q6 can go narrower, so it depends. But they can kind of do the same thing, and they're nulling at around minus 72, which we'll see it's pretty much where all are. We're never going to get a perfect null, I think. I don't know. We're going to see that. So we step off these for a second, and we take away the Oxford part. And we say, okay, well, we have the MDW. If we can make... The fab, the mat, for example, let's take the heavy heaters first. If we can take the mat to do our 200 plus 6 at Q1, e A equals B, B equals C, A equals C, right? That's good. We're going to do that. So take a bell, which is this one, 200 hertz, no feed F of 60 Bs, 0.35, no, we say, well, we say 1, right? Because we got 1, we do 1. Over sample on, no gain out, no nothing else. We press play. We make sure that this is flipping phase. And they're different. So I check it, 200, 6, 1, should be the same. So probably the numbers don't add up. So I'm going to move the queue until I see the maximum nulling. So 
So 0.71 gives me a 1.0 of the MDW. Where are we nulling in terms of intensity, of loudness? Minus 82. So that's pretty close. How about we go parallel feedback feed forward, which is the GML kind of design? Okay, apart from that noise, we're still kind of there. Things haven't changed that much. We'll still at 84. See, the 0.71 is where we are, right? Okay, so I would call this even. How far can we go in terms of, you know, this? So 0.1, now I'm gonna go much lower, 0.15, I'm gonna try and hear if there's a difference. It feels 0.15 is not wide enough. So I'm gonna try and go plus three, maybe plus two, and maybe call a plus two here. Although we remember they don't quite match, right? So who's, who's wider? Okay, at 0.15, I'm closing in on 0.2 of the Massenburg, but the Massenburg can go 0.1, so the Massenburg is wider. Matt EQ Blue will not do bells as wide as the Massenburg, at least in my experience here. Let me try and go back to Classic Sim, see how things haven't moved. Okay, now we try and see the opposite. We go 25.6, and we try and match it at 20Q, okay. These are kind of different, and I'm telling you six, I'm just checking what I'm doing. The needle of the M, the MDW still stands out. I think if I do 15, maybe I can get close there. See, I'm keeping an eye on that 200. We kind of had it, but once we start cranking it in, at maybe 20 against 25. We can't get it. We hear that halo at 48. So I'm calling these two things not matching. So the wider limits and the narrower limits lose against each other. Like they're different. Not saying who's better. We can't say who's better, who's, who's worse. But they're definitely different. So this will not match on the Sonox. We'll do what we're doing. There's gonna be differences, but the Matt EQ still hasn't cleared the things. But there's there's similarities in there. So the the, the middle part we've tested, it's gonna be the same as the Sonox. Then on the extremes, we're losing because the extremes they're kind of different. Although we said the Massenburg gets to the Oxford until a certain point, then it loses it. Then the narrowest part. The MDW is different, the math is the same thing, but the 1Q is the same. So now we take filter bank and we do the same thing. 200 hertz here, or maybe here, where was it? Here, 200, Q of one, gain six, turn these on. We got input and output completely at zero and we press play. And we're nulling at about 67, 68. But the two bus multi-core says we're in perfect phase. So they're not as similar as the other one, but we're kind of there. So I would say that even here, got same behavior. I wouldn't quite sweat, but don't think these are insanely identical because they, they're still nulling and not like 144, 110. It's like 60 or something. So it's a tiny difference. Let's go super wide, 0.10. 
Okay, let's try point 0.1 versus point 0.1. Okay, this is different. I can I hear it. I hear high frequencies. So the slopes are different. We got zero, zero, I'm just checking, just covering my bases. They're no, they're different here. Extreme. So here are 10. Let's try 24. Let's try and match it. Okay, 10 versus 10 kind of seems the closest, right? The numbers do match, so we could make use of that. Minus 76, so we got, okay, um, but the Mac GSP is limited. It goes 0.1 to 10, and the 0.1 doesn't quite reach as far as the 0.1 of the Massenburg. It seems to be a little bit more, and that the needles the Massenburg just kills it. It's it's much narrower. But as far as we go, they're similar. They're they're nulling at minus 70. So you know, you make yourself at home with that. That's what we have. Now, this means that the filter bank, the Oxford, the what we try, the matte blue, and those areas that intersect with the Massenburg, they're all the same thing. Right? Now let's keep going. Pure. We have a lot of them to do. I told you this is insane. So we go peak, gain 6, 200 hertz, Q factor of 7. Let's try and match these first. So we go only MDW and E pure. And now here, the issue is I can't go that far. So let me find a point and I will have to type them. It's very hard to move here because this is going in, in super steps now. So 7.2 maybe. Okay, we got to around minus 70. I call these the same. So bells are all bells. Q factor of one. Let's try. One could be 0.1. Let's try. Okay, so who's wider here? I think the pure is a little bit wider. It has a little bit of a less defined slope. Is this GML? No, it's their own thing, but they're doing it and it's catching a little bit more. How about needles? Let's go 25 and 100. Okay, the 100 Q factor of the E pure doesn't reach as far as the 56 as a 25.6. Okay, so actually the MDW can do twice as much. Even if you read 100, you see where I'm going, it doesn't add up. That's 100, but it's around 10, 100. So maybe dividing by, by that. So if I do one, does, point, does 0 0.5 match? No, right? because it should be different, it should be 10, maybe maybe 5, no, no, well this has a, does not add up, it's probably something different, but in the middle part, this matches again, so let's do, who's missing, fab filter, imagine we could match the fab filter here, we will be able to, hold on, 
Q, I, I have a hunch, 0 0.71 compares to the one. Let's try. I was wrong. Let's keep going. Okay, so one nulls at around minus 86. This does the same thing. How about the wide? Let's go super wide. Super wide. Pro-Q goes wider than GML. So, yeah, that, that's true. But in this case, 0.1 matches 0.1. I know that, though. It does the same for the Massenberg. The others kind of go all, all the other way around. But the Fab Filter user has that. 0.1 matches 0.1. The Fab Filter Pro-Q can do tighter than, uh, sorry, wider, broader than the MDW. Uh, but can it can it do narrower? Let's try 40 versus 25.6. I'm gonna type it if I can. All right. So the fab filter goes wider than the EQ6 and narrower than the MQ than the um, EQ6. It can do the numbers actually match. So the 25.6 on the MDW goes 40 on the fab filter. So fab filter goes even narrower than that. So this is probably the first one that goes more in both directions. But for the majority, for the number, when the numbers match, they sound the same. And again, what does it mean? Well, they null at minus 72. So feelings wise, that will feel different. But they sound the same. Like, okay, so we're kind of on the broad picture. They can do it. You can't not <laughs> handle stuff. Who do we have to try yet? The master queue, okay? Master queue, hello. So we try this. 200, one, gain of six. Everything's equal. We go one, press play. Different, so the queues don't match. Maybe a point seventy one's right. Let's try this. Yes. So this uses a different scale. So 0 0.71 matches 1. How are we nulling? Seventy-six point something. Multicore says, dude, it's the same. So we got like <laughs> very precise dude versus they're practically the same, which is the discussion all the time about this, right? So how about the super narrow stuff? So this has a wider one, okay. So we go 0.05, okay, versus 0.1. Okay, so 0 0.07 does not actually match. It can go wider, but what matters is the curve is different. Let's go with the plus. That's better. So here we're at around minus 66.6. It will feel different, but it's the closest to a GML that is there. Now there's a different thing here. That's a low mid mode. Okay. If you engage that, you see what's happening, right? We need to address the gain now. So this is off. How about we go Okay, let's try 25. Okay, even here, you see we're not quite matching. Let's try Q+. Okay, okay. So, can't type out today. I don't know why. <laughs> there we go. I had it. There. So, in Q plus, 
That's a GML thing. Now we got a hint, right? See, if you don't do this stuff, but luckily I'm here, so we can do it. So Q plus, you can get a Q up to 20, which is the 15.6 of the EQ6 of the Massenburg. The Massenburg goes needle mode, it loses you. The master Q is different. And then I would say on the wider parts, there is a more unique approach. I could, it's nulling less than the others. There's just a tiny little bit of slopes that are not exactly the same. But trust me, the numbers are all there. Everything is off. So Master Q does indeed have... Some people say, well, I love it. It just sounds different. It just is that thing. Well, it's kind of proven that we're using EQ6 as a pivot against all the other EQs. There you have it. The belts are different. Or they are the ones that actually behave a little bit more. Remember from 72 to 60... There's 12 dBs, it means it's four times different than the others are, okay? So remember, each 6 dBs, it's twice as, as much in difference. So it's, it's not just, oh, 60, 72, 9. It's different. Studio EQ. Let's try Studio EQ. I wonder whether this sounds the same. 1. Let's try 0.5. Okay, so Studio EQ does to uh, reaches down to 0 0.5, which seems always kind of different. Let's see, let's try one. Okay. One is 2.1, and we're nulling at minus 64, so it's kind of there. Two bus multi core says, dude, it's the same thing, but look at the uh, see, 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 sometimes that's quite not there. So 2.1 is one, I would say 0.5 would be probably one. It can't go as wide. How about needle wise? Okay, the low, the tighter part is kind of there. 20.4 is around 10, right? How about 20? No, 20.4. So the scale is kind of off. It's nulling much better. So it does the surgical better, probably. But we still have a little bit more to go. But still narrow. So narrower than other others than we met. But so far... Lots of connections, right? They're kind of the same. So, Kirchhoff. And then, unbelievably, we're done with the bales. But the shelves are probably going to be faster. So, 200 plus 6. I'll say 1. Let's try 1 versus 1. Doesn't work. I'm guessing we got to go lower. Point 0.71 seems to do the trick. We're around minus 80. Multi-core, dude, we're the same, right? Let's keep saying that. How about super wide? So this one goes wider than the... EQ6, but even at its closest, it sounds different. It has something about it. Maybe the slope. Okay, minus 78. We got there, so 0 0.071 is 0 0.1 there, and it, it, it should be, because 1 was 0 0.71, we divide both by 10, we're getting there. The difference are still there, but I would say, okay, okay, we're kind of there, and we can still go much farther. How about needle stuff? 
040. How curious. The Fab Future Pro 3 used to do Crew 3 does 40 as well. But this doesn't match. 200, 25.66. 200 plus 6, and I'm, I'm trying to match it, it doesn't work. Look at that peak at 200 hertz. So, wait a second. ProQ3 could go where the, the EQ6 went in terms of very tight cues and it matched, but then ProQ3 had way more. But this one actually doesn't sound like the 25.6, so unless I'm doing something wrong that I can't see, it slopes differently. Maybe there's different controls in here. Okay, let's try. We said that 10 should be what? Probably it should be um, 10 times more? No, it's scaled differently. See, that doesn't quite matter, but it did work from 10 to 1. So 1 was 0. 71. So if we go, I don't know, 10, it should be 7.1, which is true. If we go 20, it should be 14.2, which is true. If we go 25, I can't do it, but it should be around here. And it ain't. So once we reach needle-like stuff, the two are different. Very curious. I wasn't thinking about that, but Kirchhoff EQ does its thing. Better, worse, we don't know. But this one's the first case, right? It matches up to centered down, but when it goes tighter up, it's different.